Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Psalm 98. Hear now these words. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods, oh, sorry y'all, <laughs> it's been a day. I'm reading Psalm 96. Um, I was like, what is going on? Sorry. Um, so we're going to start over. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. They start the same way. <laughs> for, he is, for God has done marvelous things. God's right hand and God's holy arm have gotten victory. The Lord has made known his victory and has revealed God's vindication in sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to all the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful no noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For God is coming to judge the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and all the peoples with equity. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, open our, our hearts and minds that we may hear what you would have to say today. Amen. Well, we're in the midst of Advent, as you can tell. We've got the chrismon trees, and in a little while we'll have the children's nativity. And everywhere you go, people are saying, Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. We even sang, just sang, Joy to the World. Uh, but believe it or not, they aren't all talking about the same thing. It can be hard to distinguish between happiness and joy at all times, but during this season of the year, it can be even harder. Here in the prelude to Christmas, there is generally a lot to be happy about. We have family gatherings, we have special productions by our children. We have pretty decorations. We have parties, Christmas carols, presents, just lots of stuff to fill our lives with happiness. And it can be all wonderful and fill our hearts with happiness or not. Just like Becky said last week, this is a difficult time of year for a lot of people. Instead of being happy, they're stressed out, or they're caught in the throes of grief and longing. They could be estranged from family or gathered with people they love but are missing someone special. It seems that everyone else is having fun, but they feel left out and alone. Now, I've had my share of what you call unhappy holidays. They are times to endure and not enjoy. Now, this might not be a happy Christmas for some of you because it's going to be your first Christmas without a loved one. Or maybe you're battling cancer or some other thing that is robbing you of strength and the ability to be happy. There's no holiday cheer there. So if we're at a time of year that's based on joy, but we're not happy, how can we truly participate in the season? Well, first we have to figure out the difference between happiness and joy. Now, happiness is based on our circumstances. Um, you see, 
when our circumstances are bad, we're unhappy. When we're grieving the death of a loved one or reeling from a broken relationship or a job loss, our circumstances stink and we are not happy. Most of the time, though, our circumstances are beyond our control, which means happiness can be elusive. Now, that sounds pretty harsh and fatalistic, but it is true. But thankfully, joy is much different. Like Mackin just read with the lighting of the joy candle, we are filled with joy when we realize that we are loved and chosen by the creator of the universe, that God is with us and will not leave us, that nothing can change the way God feels about us, and that this life isn't all there is. We have a God lo that loves us more than we can fathom, and that love is where our joy comes from. Julian of Norwich, a mystic in the Middle Ages, wrote that living joyfully because of God's lavish love, in fact, is the greatest honor we can give Almighty God. Now, Psalm 98 tells us how we should respond to God's love and faithfulness. We should sing a new song to the Lord, expressing our joy by praising God. In fact, the psalmist notes that not only do people sing praises to the Lord, but all of creation does too, the rocks and hills and the seas. Isaac Watts based that famous hymn we just sang, Joy to the World, on Psalm 98. In it, he declares that the Lord has come and that this is a cause for joy because we have Emmanuel, God with us. Because God is love and this love is with us, we should open our hearts to receive God's love and our mouths to sing praises to the Lord. The presence on, of God on earth is good news because the Lord rules with truth and grace, righteousness and love. But we live in a world that seems to be hurtling toward disaster and God's presence can feel elusive. So what are we to do when our circumstances cause unhappiness? That's when we need to choose joy. Now, choosing joy isn't easy always, but it can be done. Our relationship with the Lord enables us to choose joy even during the bleak times. When we are in relationship with God, we are more attuned to God's presence in our lives. And thus, we know that we are not alone in our troubles. We also know that this life isn't all there is. There's something better coming. And this long-term focus can help us put our circumstances into perspective. So you might be sitting there thinking, how exactly do I find joy? when my life isn't going the way I wanted it to? Well, I have a few suggestions. First, we can write down one thing every day that we're thankful for to remind us that there are still good things in our life. Another thing we can do is write down one way we've seen or felt God's presence recently. Keeping a record of where we've seen God or what we're thankful for makes it easier for us to believe that we are loved and that God is with us in our pain and sadness. Now, you might be thinking that evidence of God's presence is hard to come by, uh, but we can find it even in the little things because God uses each of us to do divine work. So when you get a phone call from a friend at just the time that you needed to hear a friendly, loving voice, that is God showing you divine love through that person. Now, another thing we can do, 
a third thing, is that we can read the promises that God has made to all of us in the Bible. In Scripture, God promises to be with us through difficult times and see us through them. Now, these are just some things that we can do to help us choose joy. And Advent is a good time to choose joy because there is so much to be joyful about. Even if our circumstances are bad, we can find joy in this season because at Christmas, with the birth of the Christ child, God's love became concrete. It became something that people could see, touch, and interact with. God's love took on human form with the birth of Jesus Christ. And with this divine act, God bridged the gap between creator and created. Because God took on flesh and lived and died just like all of us do, we have a God who completely understands what we're going through. Thus, if you're having an unhappy holiday season, God understands and is with you as you live through these difficult times. Knowing that God is with us can help us find joy. Even in the midst of the worst of circumstances, we have the assurance that we are not alone, that God is with us, loving us and accompanying us through the trials, through the sadness, and through the tension. That means that even when we are experiencing unhappy holidays, we can still sing those wonderful Christmas carols with joy and love in our hearts, even if our eyes are filled with tears. Now I pray that you feel God's love fill you this Advent and for all time. When you do, you will find joy. Now Chris Tomlin wrote an updated version of Joy to the World a few years ago. Uh, and he has a refrain that he added to the song that I really love. And the refrain goes, joy, unspeakable joy, an overflowing well, no tongue can tell. Joy, unspeakable joy, rises in my soul and never lets me go. Those words are my prayer for us as we continue to travel through Advent to Christmas into 2023 and beyond. I pray that we can all find joy, unspeakable joy, that rises in our soul and never lets us go. Thanks be to God. Amen.